Hello everyone, thanks for joining me again. I'm exploring a bit today. I didn't really uh, think that I was going to take photos. I'm here in the middle of nowhere in the Karoo in South Africa between two mountain ranges. Um, and as you can probably see in the background, it's a bit of a cloudy day and uh, the bottom ends of the cloud are actually touching the, the mountain. So I'm just exploring to see if there's maybe some potential around here. Now I think this location where I am uh, will basically work for sunset and sunrise, but it would definitely need some cloud. I just need to find some foreground interest, but at the moment I'm just shooting a few uh, shots um, of the distant mountains with some fog on it. Uh, there's maybe some potential there. As you can see, uh, I've got a dirt road that I can use as a leading line into the distance, but uh, I probably need to shoot at 200 plus millimeters for the distant mountains and then over here I've got this old wind pump uh, broken one that might also make some nice foreground interest uh, though I normally don't include any uh, man-made uh, sub uh, well, objects in my in my photos uh, this could actually work um, but yes beautiful area I think I need to uh, explore a bit more into the mountains not just from the road and uh, very quiet. Uh, I haven't seen any other traffic on this road and I've been here for about probably about 20 minutes. But yes, overall nice area and also area relatively new to me. Actually quite nice foothills here in front of me now. Uh, I can probably try and get a bit closer there is a road that gets relatively close and then the last are probably about one and a half two kilometers uh, would be an easy hike but uh, yes for now i'm just going to try and uh, see if i can catch some light on the distant mountains with fog or the clouds on on top well here's a nice composition just off the road um, the foothills i showed earlier on um, i'm shooting at 70 millimeters at the moment um, I was hoping that those clouds would be slightly lower and roll over the hill. Uh, it would be nice for a time lapse, but there's not enough wind, so there's not really much motion today. But I think I've got a pretty nice composition here. The, um, unfortunately, the road doesn't really lead into the distance, but the road from the bottom right hand leads you to the to the tree, the small bushy tree, and then from there your 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 eye can uh, follow the ridge that runs from the left hand side towards the right. Not a particularly strong composition, but I'll see if I can reposition myself slightly uh, to get the road uh, or the dirt road to be more of a leading line. Yes, I think this is slightly better. I've moved slightly to the right so I'm getting the, the road, the whole bottom end of the photo is basically the road. And then that leads you into the, into the image, takes you to the left to the tree. And from then there is a line both on the horizon and about halfway in the middle of the image that takes your eye back into the, uh, towards the right. Um, I'm not sure if I need to shoot it like this or maybe slightly higher but unfortunately uh, there's not that much interest in the sky. I could maybe get a bit more out of the sky with a filter, uh, but there's not really much in the in the in the clouds. It's pretty even grayish color. But anyway, let me take the photo and see what it looks like. Here's a slightly different version of the image. Uh, what I've done here is I've zoomed in slightly more. I'm at about 120 millimeters now. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm really uh, the the road or the dirt road is no longer a main feature in the image. It's more the tree, the the bushy tree uh, in this arid landscape, and then of course the hills in the background with the fog on them, uh, leading your eye from the left hand side lowish up to the right hand side to the top of the image exiting at the top but uh, yes I think quite a pleasant 
image and I like the, the rich uh, brownish orangey colors and the, the bushes that are, are quite uh, pale in comparison. Uh, this area is really dry at the moment. We really did, do need some rain. But yes, it's also also beautiful in its, in its arid way. Here's a variation of the previous image. I've just uh, moved uh, the camera slightly to the left, pointing slightly more to the left, and I've zoomed in uh, slightly more, about 130 millimeters at the moment. Um, moving the, the, the tree, the bush from the bottom left to the bottom right, uh, and getting a bit more of the, the foggy hills in, in the distance, which I think are quite useful. But you can see this is the more zoomed out version. And then just just using the tree and the one more to the left as foreground interest, and then uh, the best the the rest of the image is based on the on the hills in the background. I'm not sure if this is going to work, uh, but I'll see when I get it to the computer. Another version of the image, even more zoomed in, I'm now 200 millimeters. Uh, only the one little bush in the foreground for foreground interest. And then the, the hills fading away into the distance in the, in the clouds, or in the fog I should say. It makes for a, a rather moody image. Um, maybe even in, in black and white, I'll have a look. But uh, there's not enough really bright areas in the image. Uh, I normally would, you know, for black and white I would like a really dark part of the image, which is the bush in the fore foreground on the left hand side and then somewhere a rather bright highlight and, and that's a bit I'm missing but maybe I can uh, enhance the the brightness on the hills on the top third on the right hand side specifically maybe get a bit more out of it in, in post processing I'll give it a try but uh, again nice area I think this will work for a sunset and even maybe for a sunrise because I'm now I'm now looking towards the west or northwest I should say, maybe with a sunrise we'll get some nice light on those distant hills. Might just be what is needed. still working the hills this is again at 200 millimeters now I'm just using the hills it's a bit of a yellowish uh, open ground in the foreground you can't see it on the video so much because of the way it's it's uh, cropped uh, but in the image it'll there'll be more of that to anchor the image and then we just have the the ridge and then another ridge behind it and the one at the back fading into the clouds at the top if I can get a little bit of um, what shall I say, interest in the clouds, a bit of contrast in the clouds is really what I'm looking for, the word. Uh, that would also help. Um, I can't really see it on the video camera here, but on the on the camera, on the, on the photo, there is a bit of contrast there. There are like three layers of clouds. So uh, I'll have to try and put a bit of more contrast in, in the in the sky for the for the final image. But let's see if it works. Let me take it. And yes, if it works, you will see it just now.
Yes, I quite like this. I would have liked a bit more light. Um, the distant mountains towards the left of this image is starting to light up, but uh, there's no guarantee it's going to happen around here. But I really like the, the layers, the, the yellowish foreground, and then the midground is this huge hill with a row of, of trees, tiny trees on the top of it. And then another ridge behind it, slightly higher one, uh, in the distance that fades into the cloud. Uh, I think this has a lot of potential, but I would have liked just some light on the, let's say, in the, in the, in the middle ground. Or even the foreground, a bit of light would have been nice there. But uh, maybe there's hope. But a little bit of post-processing might just make the difference. Beautiful area. Uh, I just stopped here for a quick photo or two and now I've been looking around here and taking some photos for quite a while and I can already see another composition on my left hand side. Let me quickly take this photo. Well, I'm now taking a walk further towards uh, the west to try and see if I can get some of the the further mountains and uh, shoot them. Um, slowly but surely the clouds are now starting to break up. I see some blue patches in the sky already and the light is changing quickly. So, uh, yes, excuse me if I'm out of breath. Uh, I just ran back to the car to go and fetch the, the little video camera, this uh, DJI Pocket 2 because I realized I haven't shot any b-roll because I was primarily thinking there's no video in this but maybe there is a video in this let's have a look uh, I'm now going to be shooting towards initially towards uh, the east but I also want to see if I can get anything to the west there's quite a bit of interest towards the west and I've got this beautiful dirt road that I can use as a leading line but yes let's see what we can capture there's always hope now this is actually quite nice. I've walked about a kilometer now further away from the car and um, sun is breaking through in spots now and it's lighting up the distant hills. Uh, let me just show you what I'm looking at. As you can see here we've got a beautiful, the leading line, this road going off into the distance. Uh, a little bit of blue in the sky with some broken cloud and then that hill basically in the middle of the image uh, that is catching a bit of light. And then in the far distance we've got some uh, more mountains still hidden a, a bit by the fog and the clouds. And we've got a farmhouse there in the middle of nowhere and then towards my other side here another mountain ridge. But I'm going to have to move quickly because uh, the light is changing very quickly and in a few minutes I think the clouds are going to be gone. And then it's going to be just harsh light so uh, let me shoot quickly while I can. This is the view towards the west with this beautiful dirt road as a leading line. And then in the distance some mountain ranges with some clouds. Um, the clouds are starting to break up around here. Unfortunately there's some there's a road sign in the middle of the image. And if you can see it, it actually shows that there's a little drift up ahead. Uh, I'm gonna have to get rid of that, or maybe I must just walk another 300 meters and get past it. I'll give that a try, but uh, I really don't want that in my image. There's also a fence, an old rusty, rustic fence, but I probably don't mind if that if that stays in the image. Yes, I love this. Road leading into the distance. Um, some interesting hills uh, in the far distance, uh, all uh, moody and, and disappearing into the fog. And then on the left hand side, there's a bit of a, there's a hill that is lighting up with, uh, with some sun on it. As you can see here. Yeah? So I need to, this is a 200 millimeters, I probably need to try and shoot this at, I don't know, that's 70 millimeters, that actually works for me. So let me quickly take this image before the light on that mountain, or that hill I should say, disappears. Oh yes, this is exactly what I, what I was in. I was hoping for uh, some light on that hill on the left hand side. Leading line takes your eye into the picture, into the distance, the far off mountains, and then um, as you get to the mountains you are, your eye follows the horizon onto this, uh, let's say the main feature almost, this hill on the left hand side that is now catching some sun, and it's nice yellow, uh, bit of grass and plants on it, uh, mostly rocks I think, and a few trees. So I love it. I'm now beyond the, the road sign that was causing me some headaches early on. Uh, so I really think this image works. And it's not, it's quite late in the morning already, but um, there's definitely light, usable light. 
So the grey clouds can be your friend. And I'm so glad they are breaking up at the moment, it's not just grey. As you can see, there's still some clouds uh, at the top end of the mountain. This mountain that, I'm, that we're looking at now is about 800 meters above ground level. It's about, well, about 750 meters higher than I am. So that gives you an idea of how high, or should I say how low the clouds are. But a gorgeous area. Let me just show you what the, the horizon looks around. Uh, this mountain range is really beautiful. And then we move into the valley that I shot earlier on. Uh, the gorgeous valley so I think even a bit further on I'm, I'm on a hill overlooking the valley maybe another 400 meters further on we are I'm almost like at the at the rim of the hill that might also be an interesting spot but uh, imagine this now with uh, some nice lit up sky either sunset or sunrise uh, some fluffy clouds uh, beautiful definitely spot to come back to but um, I saw this on on Google Earth this road and I decided I need to explore and I finally got a chance this morning. And I love this this composition. I'm at about two I'm at two hundred millimeters now. Um, we've got the dirt road that leads into the middle distance and on both the, the right and the left hand side there are these darkish bushes that kind of keeps your eye on the road that leads you into the far distance where you've got the mountain ranges uh, still slightly hidden in the, in the fog or in the low clouds and then in the middle we've got from the left hand side crossing into the middle of the image this, this ridge that is lit up by the sun now that is uh, yellowish um, absolutely gorgeous again better light would make a difference but uh, this is better than expected there might even be an image in here Well, I think unfortunately that's it. The light is now getting rather harsh, um, as you could probably see. Um, the sun is breaking through in spots and it's already quite high, so it's not ideal conditions. And the, the filter that we were getting from the clouds are now disappearing. But yes, I really had fun, unexpected. Came out for a drive and ended up uh, getting a few photos that might even be usable. But yes, by now you would have seen them. I hope you enjoyed this video, this unintended video. Sorry if there wasn't much B-roll because I didn't think I was going to need B-roll. I was going to take one or two images for later reference, but um, I think it worked out better than that. But thanks for joining. Uh, if you like this video, please click uh, like. I would appreciate it. And subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And yes, in the description below, you can see more about my equipment and where you can get a hold of my images or contact me if you want to. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Have a great day. Stay safe. Until next time. Cheers. Good morning everyone. For those that don't know me, my name is Rudy Fent. I'm a landscape photographer from South Africa. This morning I am in the Great River Mountains, Groot River Mountains, in the Karoo region of South Africa. I've actually, before first light, I climbed up the side of this, this mountain, uh, hoping that we'll get a spectacular sunrise, because the prediction was for broken clouds. But unfortunately, as you can see, the broken clouds are solid, so not much hope of, of good light. But I am exploring here a bit. It's, it's not a very easy place to get to. 
And the huge irritation here is actually the mosquitoes. I can't believe there are so many mosquitoes this high up on the side of the mountain with no standing water around, or no standing water that I know of anyway. There are quite a few little gorges here, a um, couple of hills, and then the bigger mountain is at my back. But anyway, let's see what I can find this morning if the mosquitoes don't suck me dry. And of course, once I've done with the shooting, I've got to get down here again. It's very rocky, of course, no footpath or anything like that. So hopefully I won't slide down, I will walk down. But thanks for joining me again. Let's see what I can find. Well, yeah, I found something that I think is quite an interesting composition. Of course, you are now seeing it in a cinematic format on this camera. I'm actually shooting this video with, with the Sony A7R 3 So uh, it's not the normal camera that I shoot from the back, but I've, I've been getting issues with reflections uh, shooting from the back. So I'm trying this as an experiment this morning. Please bear with me. But I like the, the slope going from the top left to bottom right. Uh, the colors in the clouds and then the little tree. Oh, that's a little tree top right hand, oh, sorry, top left hand, that kind of anchors the, the whole composition. So I'm going to try and shoot it like this. Uh, I'm probably going to have to do at least a stack of two for exposure, just for foreground and, and the, the clouds in the sky. But let's see what I can make with this. Well, here we have the, the captured image. I quite like the composition. Uh, specifically the rock in the bottom left hand corner in the foreground that kind of anchors the image. also like the diagonal line that runs from top left to bottom right uh, of the slope and then also the two trees uh, on the slope. I would have liked the right hand tree to be either slightly lower below the horizon or a lot higher to be above the horizon. Um, something to keep in mind if I ever try and reshoot this composition. The fact that we've got some clouds in the sky and a bit of colour is a, is a big bonus. I'm quite happy with that. I actually think this is quite pretty. The clouds have a, a bit of structure to them, plus uh, also some colour, a mix of orange and blues, depending on where the sun is lighting them up and where not. Um, interesting top third. Um, there's that tree that has almost fallen over. Um, just almost horizontal the trunk but still hanging on there for dear life plus the trees that lead up to the corner towards the left uh, top corner all just hanging onto the onto the cliff then we've got the slope diagonal across um, that leads to the tree in the bottom right hand corner I'm going to definitely have to exposure stack this as well to get detail out of both the, the trees in the foreground and the clouds but I, I think this is a usable shot I haven't shot a, a grand landscape for a while. This is not exactly snow-covered mountains, but this is what we get in this part of the world. I like the top left-hand corner of this, uh, this composition better than the previous one. But unfortunately now the bottom right-hand corner is a bit of a mess. That tree there is uh, just hidden with a slope behind it and the horizon behind it. So I think it might be worthwhile to even crop this out completely. Um, I had to stack, exposure stack this image. I also lifted the shadows quite a bit. Um, other than that, I didn't do much to the image. Um, I think the composition's got potential, but uh, definitely going to have to go and rework it, maybe on a day with slightly nicer clouds. The clouds are not too bad, but it wasn't really spectacular. Really interesting old day tree, eh? Must be must have been dead for quite a while because it's already mostly decayed on the slope. But I thought let me just uh, see if I can make a quick composition out of it. There's still some colour in the cloud, so I'm using this as the main the main attraction. This dead tree, 
uh, and then just some interest in the sky and another tree off to the right unfortunately I would have liked that tree on the right to be slightly higher up against the horizon but it's not feasible in this position but I think it would be an interesting shot maybe maybe not special but at least it documents what this really arid and wild place is like no footpaths, nothing. I don't even see animal paths here on the side of the hill. So I don't even think the big antelope uh, comes up here. It's only baboons and monkeys, of which I am probably one. Here we have the captured image. Um, I, I really like the, the dead tree in the foreground um, and the diagonal line made uh, created by the slope from top left to bottom right. Unfortunately, the, the two of the branches of the tree actually go above the horizon, which I think uh, kind of spoils the image a bit. And again, that little tree on the right-hand side is not ideal. It would have been far better if it was above the horizon. Clouds, relatively interesting, but I think the next time I shoot this, uh, I'm going to try and shoot from slightly higher maybe to drop both the dead, the dead tree and uh, the small tree below the horizon. I think then maybe it would be a, a far better image. So this image will go into the stock, uh, not to be printed, but uh, for reference only a bin. Well, here I have a composition I quite like. I managed to get low enough on this to get most of the tree above the horizon. It's also a very uh, interesting tree. It's actually two trees. The one has collapsed, fallen over. It's just a dead, a dead tree against a live one. I don't know how long the dead one has been dead, but again, it has decayed quite a bit, full of holes from insects. But still some nice interest in the sky. Of course, uh, on the video here, you're seeing it uh, in panoramic format, or cinematic format, I should say. So it's not quite the same as the final photo will be, but I'll show you. Um, foreground interest, some nice rocks. Then this rather interesting, interesting tree. Uh, clouds above colorful and texture and some uh, mountains on the horizon I actually quite like this uh, this tree is also in a more uh, assess accessible place so I can probably visit it again in the future without uh, putting on my monkey suit of the images that I've captured today I definitely like this one the most so far anyway um, the tree really has a lot of character specifically the bottom side of it the dead tree in front and then the live one at the back. Again the diagonal uh, from left to right works well. This time fortunately there's no little tree or something on the right hand side that is cutting the horizon or sitting below the horizon. So I think this is actually quite a pleasant um, composition. I would have liked something maybe in the foreground, some more foreground interest, not just a few rocks and a, and a few small plants. But um, this is a very empty area with, with uh, a very dry arid area. So I suppose that also captures the wide openness. Um, I think the tree actually deserves some close-up work at some point as well. So I will be heading back to this tree sometime, maybe even with a macro lens. Or maybe just to do some compositions on the bottom, bottom end of the, of the tree. But I really like this composition and I'm glad I managed to capture this today. Shooting the same tree as the previous image, but now I've moved a bit so that it's now on the right hand side. So I can include the, the rather steep slope going up towards the top left hand corner with the, the trees in the distance. I think that's actually quite beautiful. Um, I really like this. Uh, the clouds are still maintaining, it's actually getting relatively late in the day, but the clouds are still maintaining some, some color and some shape. And it's not too hot yet, it's only about probably about 23 degrees. But I see there's a pretty good chance that I, I might, before I get down, I might get wet. There's some rain rolling in from the south. So let me get the shot quickly so that I can try and get undercover. Well, this is the image that I captured in a bit of a hurry, trying not to get wet. Well, if anything, I potentially like this image even more than the previous one. Uh, what I specifically like about it, um, the rocks in the foreground are slightly more interesting, slightly more prominent, which helps. Uh, the tiny little trees on the slope in the background add some interest. And then the, if I look at the main tree uh, towards the right-hand side, the, the dead tree that kind of follows 
the same angle, sloping angle as the slope actually makes it really interesting. Um, the clouds are not as colorful as some of the earlier images, but I really like this um, particular composition. Um, I think I also need to maybe shoot it from the other side and maybe in a sunset up environment. So glad I discovered this tree. Uh, it's got lots of potential and I think this image might actually end up uh, being printed at the very least. Well here we have what is most likely the last composition of the day. I'm actually on my way down the mountain, almost at the bottom. Thank goodness. Uh, another dead tree growing on a live tree. It appears to be actually growing on it. Really interesting. A relatively small tree this, uh, this time. But uh, the, pa the patterns in the bark is beautiful and it's uh, almost a white creamish color. I'm going to have to bring that out in, in post-processing. But again, I think uh, the surprise on the way down, and I'm actually seeing two, three more trees around, a very similar type of trees. Uh, I'm going to have to revisit them on a day with maybe better light. Uh, the clouds are now starting to turn a, a overall gray. And the, as the rain moves in, or moves closer, I should say, uh, the light is now actually getting worse. Uh, I'm uh, going to have to shoot this at about... Uh, two seconds I think uh, F11 ISO 100 it's quite dark already this image was captured in a bit of a rush due to the weather but um, I really like the tree I think it's got so much character specifically the the white part of it and the left hand side of it uh, composition wise uh, I like the slope coming in from the left hand side what I do not like is the little hill just below the the live tree would have liked slightly more separation so maybe moving the camera slightly towards the right and maybe shooting from a slightly lower angle would, would make a difference here so that's something to consider um, I didn't really think out this composition I have to admit but uh, I've got to document it I like, I like the tree, I like the area and it's also quite easy to get to which helps a lot so um, again I'm going to have to go back to this one maybe with better light as well because the clouds are really really gray in this image just look at the texture and the color on that tree absolutely amazing absolutely amazing i just love this i'm definitely gonna have to come back here uh, i can't wait i would love to shoot this with a bit of fog in the background just to isolate it a bit but there's so much character here also need to shoot this with a macro lens i can see there's a couple of abstracts hiding in this little tree trunk. Beautiful. I did quickly capture an image of this tree. Just couldn't resist the, the interesting bark and the roots. Uh, you can see the dead tree with the roots over the live tree. And the composition I think works best as a more of, a, of an abstract. Um, but the, the white, the contrast between the white tree, the dead tree and the one behind it full of green leaves is actually quite interesting. Um, I think to do justice to this, I really have to come and shoot it in fog uh, with a wide lens and then also with a macro lens because the, the shapes on the bark of the dead tree is absolutely amazing. I'm really, really happy that I managed to capture this image uh, even though it was an absolute rush job because uh, I'm going to get wet any second now. Well everyone, I'm back down the mountain in one piece. Fortunately, it's quite funny. I came here this morning with a plan of actually going to shoot a specific tree at the top of this uh, call it a, a foothill uh, first in, in, in the range of mountains uh, went up there pitch dark only my headlight uh, no stars no moon nothing um, when I got to the top I sat down for a while I thought that was more than I expected the climb it was quite steep anyway when it got a bit lighter I realized two things first thing is I'm not where I think I, I thought I was. I went up the wrong hill, or the, ended up not the hill, it ended up being part of the mountain. First problem, so my tree wasn't there, not, not really an issue, lots of other beautiful trees. But then as it got light and I looked down, I thought, uh oh, how am I ever going to get down here again? Because of course going up, relatively easy, going down with loose rocks, not always that easy. And for those that might know me better know that I do have a back issue. I've had a major back operation, so I've got to be very careful with my back. But anyway, made it down, found some absolutely gorgeous trees on the way down. I'm definitely going to be back. <laughs> I have now marked the GPS position of this, and I'll go and mark the other one now as well, so I don't make this mistake again. But it can really get dark out here. 
absolutely perfect place for the telescope. I must bring it out sometime. Anyway, guys, girls, thanks for joining me again. Much appreciated. It was fun this morning. Um, maybe one or two images are worth it. I think so. If you like what you saw, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see any of my videos in the future. Um, you can look down below in the description uh, for links to a website, my Redbubble site, where you can buy either prints or merchandise. If you want the very best images, I preserve for a limited edition uh, custom prints. Um, I normally only print 25 of those each, uh, and then I will sign them and serialize them. Thanks for joining me. Much appreciated. Hope to see you again in the near future. Have a great day and stay safe. Well, good morning everyone welcome back to my channel for those who don't know me my name is Rudy Fenter and I'm a landscape photographer from South Africa this morning um, I am gonna try and capture the sunrise uh, here in the Karoo region of South Africa we've got a couple of clouds as you can see and they're starting to light up um, I'm also gonna look for a nice tree there are lots of very nice shepherd's trees around here maybe some rock formations but yes the Sun is starting to rise I better move on I'm so glad you uh, you are here. Please, uh, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. Much appreciated. Let's go image hunting. found my first composition of the morning it's still very dark even with this camera on ISO 6400 the video is still a bit dark but as you can see I've got a LED headlight with me so I'm planning on some light painting anyway so I'll just show you what I've got here in the foreground I've got some rocks rock formation that leads into the image and then on the left hand top there's a very prominent shepherd's tree beautiful tree that I'm gonna use as an anchor point and then yes uh, looks like we might have a very nice sunrise or at least a decent sunrise you see there's some clouds up there already starting to change color and on the right hand side there's a uh, euphorbia and some other bushes as well with another rock more towards the middle overall I think the composition can work especially if the sky lights up nicely I must just make sure that I don't first of all clip the highlights and secondly that I don't cut off the shepherd's tree on the left hand side uh, it's quite close to the top of the image. Well, you see it in 16 by 9 at the moment for the video. Um, in the photo, it'll be slightly better. But let's see if we can make this work, We're waiting for the light. Here we have the image I managed to capture. As you can see, the light painting did actually work quite well with the foreground. It's light enough. Uh, I ended up not uh, shooting uh, multiple exposures. Um, the leading line, bottom left towards the center, works well with the rock. And so does the leading line on the other side. They, they capture your, 
your eye and they force you towards the middle of the image where we've got some color in the sky. Um, the tree that was uh, top left hand, unfortunately, was too far for light painting. My light wasn't powerful enough, so it was just a very dark blob. So I ended up cropping it out in this image. But overall, I'm quite happy with a almost um, fairy tale like image. Um, I love the the very uh, beautiful pink uh, color in the sky. I have changed the composition slightly now. As you can see, I move slightly towards the right to try and get the the shepherd's tree more into the image, and then also on the other hand, try and get a bit more of the clouds that are more towards the left into the image. I'm still waiting for some more color in the sky, but it looks like there might be some clouds right on the horizon. So I might have to wait a while longer. Maybe there is a gap that'll that'll come come through. Composition similar to the previous shot. Um, rocks in the foreground. You might just be able to see them. You probably can't see them. It's still too dark. I'm trying to light them up. Then the shepherd's tree on the left hand side, and another rock almost in the middle, with some euphorbias behind it. And then yes, hopefully the clouds that'll light up a bit. Um, I'm gonna try and maybe move even slightly further right and raise the camera slightly because at the moment the bottom end of the shepherd's tree is a bit hidden behind the behind some uh, euphorbias here in the foreground so i'm going to just raise it slightly and see if that'll make a difference this is the image i managed to capture with a camera um, lowish uh, about half a meter above the ground and move slightly to the right compared to the free previous composition uh, what I do like about it, uh, some interesting uh, clouds in the sky, a bit of color, not much. Um, and then what I do not like about it is the, the tree is actually a bit hidden. I'm, I've lost quite a bit of the, uh, the rock in the foreground and the colors uh, seem a bit flat. Um, I could boost the colors a bit, but uh, overall the image just seems a bit flat. I need more foreground interest. I think that that is the main problem. Um, I should have included more of the rock in the foreground, but then I would have lost some, some of the sky, unfortunately. Well, here's the composition with the camera raised slightly, probably by about a, it's over half a meter. Um, I'm getting a bit more of the horizon in, and I think also more of the trunk of the, the shepherd's tree. But unfortunately, in the process, of course, I've lost some of the foreground rocks. So there's still, still some rocks in, but the, the nice leading line that I had is no longer there. Of course I can change the the composition slightly, uh, maybe more like this, drop it a bit more because those high clouds are not that interesting and then maybe I'll get some more of the, the foreground interest. Uh, I'm going to have to exposure bracket this because the foreground is still very dark as the sky lights up. So let me just see if I can capture it like this. Maybe, maybe there's an image in here somewhere. Here is the image with the camera raised slightly. Um, I think it does work a bit better in terms of including more foreground, uh, which gives the image a uh, bit of depth, it's not as flat. Um, I would have liked the, the rock in the foreground, the leading line, to be slightly, to start slightly more to the left towards the corner of the image. And that's, uh, as you'll see, I've actually tried that in, in, in my next attempt. But overall, yes, the sky is, uh, there is a bit of interest in the sky, not enough color. Um, at this point, there was uh, the sun was just trying to to light up uh, or to break through uh, from behind a cloud on the horizon. But um, as you'll see in the the next image, uh, I think the final one was the best one. Fortunately, uh, perseverance uh, helped in the end. Well, here's my third attempt at this composition. Um, drop the camera slightly, uh, or the angle of the camera. It's now almost level with the horizon to try and get some more foreground and I think this is what I'm starting to like you can see the foreground the leading line is, is there the shepherd's tree is there I've got the other rock over there towards the right hand side all I need now is for the sky to light up you won't actually see it in this uh, on this camera maybe but there is a bit of color in the sky uh, I actually just wish the the rock in the front in the foreground was actually slightly more to the left and I will maybe move again and see if I can change that. But I think in the process I'm going to lose the, the beautiful clouds. Here's my final attempt at that composition. And as you can see, firstly, I did move the camera uh, slightly further to the right. Um, as I was thinking of doing it. Plus, I waited a little while. 
just uh, for the clouds to light up. And uh, they did light up briefly. As you'll see, now we not only have the clouds with the orange on the right-hand side, but also the, the orangey, almost reddish cloud just above the tree. And I like the, the lines that the clouds also form. They actually point towards the tree from the right-hand side. And then the rock formation on the bottom left that leads your eye into the sky to the horizon up to the clouds. Overall, I'm quite happy with this image. Um, I think this is the best I could do in that particular location. So yes, Perseverance paid off and I managed to capture an image that I'm happy with. Um, never give up after the first attempt. And while I'm looking at the sunrise, this is happening behind me. Some beautiful colors in the sky. Plus, of course, this rather nice shepherd's tree makes for a nice composition. I just need to maybe move slightly to the right to get the tree maybe slightly more off center and get those nice leading lines in the clouds running from top left-hand corner into the tree. But uh, yes, always a surprise behind you. Yes, I quite like this, this composition. The clouds form nice leading lines on from the left hand side all pointing towards the tree and there's still a bit of color in the cloud even though it's fading now and then of course the tree very interesting the shepherd's tree it's got beautiful uh, bark uh, it's quite light in color so i'm hoping i can bring that out in post processing but i just caught this in time because as you can see from the video clip a few minutes ago this is the color is now mostly gone but it was nice while it lasted yeah, I'm showing you the two images that I managed to capture. First of all, the image where there was still quite a bit of color in the sky. Um, uh, this was shot at 20 millimeters. And I quite like, I specifically like the, the leading lines uh, that the colors in the sky, the clouds form, that kind of points towards uh, the tree. Um, the yellowish orange uh, cloud behind the tree is also nice just above the mountains. Um, I would have liked a tiny bit more foreground interest. But that wouldn't have been that easy. The second uh, version of the image, I actually zoomed into about 26 millimeters. Um, the colors in the sky have changed. The, the leading lines are still there, but some of the clouds have broken up a bit. I've also moved slightly towards the right. I'm not sure which one of these two I actually prefer. I think the first one, the clouds are nicer, uh, but maybe the slightly tighter uh, shot here with a, with a longer lens and the second one helps. Um, I think the composition is better in the second one, but the clouds were better in the first one, so I wish I could have combined them, but uh, the secret here is never forget to look behind you when you're shooting a sunrise or a sunset. Often the magic is happening behind you while you're patiently waiting for something to happen in front of you. Yeah, you can see a, a composition with the mountains in the distance. While I'm shooting the, the white angle, I'm also having a look here at the, at the telephoto, shooting at 200 millimeters in a crop sensor here. Um, ISO 100, F11, and it's going to be about a 3.2 second exposure. Um, the colors are quite nice, uh, purple pinkish colors, but uh, not the reds that I was expecting. Uh, slightly towards the left, uh, the sky is lighting up a bit where the sun will actually rise, but over there there's no real interest in the, in the, in the background. Uh, the mountains are hidden by a hill quite close by and it's not such an interesting hill. But I think for now this photo is also quite interesting specifically with the colors and the layers, the cloud layers and the foreground layers.
this image is towards where the sun will rise in a few minutes. Uh, nothing really interesting in the image other than some nice colors. So not a portfolio shot, but uh, a beautiful sky anyway. If nothing else, it'll end up in one of the Instagram sunrise groups. They'll probably enjoy it, but I don't think I'm going to end up putting this in my portfolio. After the nice surprise with the beautiful colors behind the, me uh, during the sunrise, I uh, also took the drone up and took a few images, specifically towards the mountains in the distance. The first image here, you can see some beautiful clouds over the mountains, some light on the mountains themselves. And then, of course, in the foreground, there's a, a tree, a shepherd's tree, I think quite beautiful. The second image, uh, I flew about uh, a thousand meters towards the mountain. Here you can actually see the mountain, just the top sketching light. Unfortunately, the sky was not so colorful anymore, but uh, still a pretty beautiful shot uh, and not something you can, a photo would have been able to take without the use of a drone. So uh, I love my drone. Um, here's a close-up uh, of another tree on the ridge. I managed to fly up there, didn't climb up there, or I was uh, anxious to get the image of the tree with some beautiful clouds behind. I knew by the time I got to the tree, uh, the clouds would have been gone. And in effect, they were almost gone. But I still think this is quite a, a usable image. Uh, and that specific tree uh, you might recognize is featured before in one of my videos. I really like it. Well, everyone, I think that's it for this morning. Had a relatively uh, nice light show towards the sunrise. Not as many clouds as I wanted. Now we've got lots of clouds, but it's too late. But there were some quite nice colors in the sky. And then also behind me, uh, away from the sunrise, uh, there were also some nice colors. I think there are one or two images there that, that might work. Um, the images I captured with a long lens at 200 millimeters. Nice colors, nice layers, uh, but not much detail or foreground interest. But I think they will make nice atmospheric images. Also towards the end when the color in the sky was mostly gone, I did try a couple of shots uh, of the shepherd's tree with a drone. I wanted to get it from a slightly higher perspective, looking slightly down, from about four meters high. Uh, and I think they're going to be quite okay. By now you've probably seen them. But I think I need to make use of the drone maybe more in some cases, um, because it's, it's very convenient to move it around uh, and get slightly higher perspective than I can get with a, with a, uh, with a camera and a tripod. Anyway, thanks for watching. Much appreciated. If you like what you saw, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. If you're interested in any prints or to use some of my images, please contact me direct. Uh, all the very best images, I normally do limited uh, run prints, 25 prints only, and they'll be serialized and signed by me. For any other merchandise, have a look below in the description. Visit my Redbubble site where you can buy anything from a coffee mug to a t-shirt with the images on. Uh, if you've seen any images in the videos that aren't there, please let me know. I don't upload all the images there, only a, a select few. Thanks for watching. Much appreciated. Hope to see you in the next video. I try and release them on a Sunday evening uh, on a weekly basis. Hope to see you again. Have a great day. Keep well and keep safe. Cheerio.
trail going on an adventure into the mountains uh, endless dirt roads around here it's about a about a 62 kilometer drive on, on roads like this the last bit of the trip is on uh, some rather serious or quite a nice mountain pass uh, quite rough terrain very uh, unprepared road but yes all part of the adventure and the plan is to actually spend tonight uh, in the mountains uh, at a river uh, camp sleep over there to catch both uh, well hopefully a sunset and a sunrise there are a couple of clouds at the moment some beautiful high clouds i hope they're going to stick around with a bit of luck they'll we'll get even a few more by the end of the day plus um, the direction i'm driving is a lot closer to the ocean uh, i'm driving in the direction of the ocean so i'm hoping that uh, that'll also help with a few more clouds but let's see what the adventure brings thanks for joining me again well uh, i'm now off the the main track um, this is still a public road, but it's uh, quite a bit rougher, but a beautiful area going into the foothills now. So I'm looking forward to uh, the road getting more difficult, but also more interesting. Um, I've actually got friends who have a farm around here, so I have been here before, in this area specifically. So I do remember that other than the rather bad road, you've also got to be careful of animals. Uh, lots of kudu around here. So I'm just taking a casual drive. Uh, the official speed limit I think here is 60 kilometers an hour. But a lot of the time that even 60 kilometers an hour is not really safe. We're not driving a rally car, we're going on an adventure here. But as you can see, uh, the landscape is changing from the normal Karoo with just the big open piece, uh, open stretches. We're now getting all these little hills here. And there are also some thorn bushes some slightly larger thorn bushes of course there's obviously a little river here in front as you can see there's a lot more uh, vegetation here than in the open open areas look how beautiful it is we're dropping into the valley here um, on this little two-track road it's actually quite a nice road compared to what is going to follow a bit later i'm about halfway not quite almost halfway into the trip and um, more and more off the beaten track but yes we're getting closer to the mountains you can see the Bavians mountains in the background quite famous for, because on the other side of the mountains there's a, a valley and there's a nature reserve so most people go over there but uh, I've decided to go off the beaten track here and be on the other side of the mountain where very few people ever come and I've been driving now probably for about 45 minutes on this road and I haven't seen another vehicle or human for that matter so far the total count is one kudu and a couple of birds but yes look at this uh, it's cut into the mountain over here so it's actually quite pleasant on, on my right hand side there's a river obviously no water uh, there's only water here when there's a lot of rain and that happens probably not even every year oh and there's a vehicle coming from the front amazing uh, that is quite amazing I will see how we're going to pass them but uh, yes nice to see some other life around here yeah. it's actually quite pleasant okay a lady probably a farmer's wife or a farmer I should say can't say it's the wife a good friend of mine a female friend of mine actually farms around here as well all by alone himself so don't discount the ladies but yes, beautiful area, uh, very natural, other than this road that is cut into the, into the, uh, well, the rock. Uh, lots of rock, very rocky. I don't think you ever have to worry here about getting stuck in the mud, HI. I see up ahead there's actually a wind pump. Uh, this one is pumping away. Seriously, I wonder if there's water. But it looks like a relatively new one. So one of the farmers around here must have uh, been maintaining it. And yeah, next to the road, we've got aloes. Don't know if you can see them on the video, but uh, yes, these are starting to flower. Gorgeous, as we're going, getting closer to the mountain, they are starting to flower. And these are quite tall ones, a varying range, I would say roughly between uh, 1.8 and about 3.5 meters tall. Some of them even taller, absolutely gorgeous. 
Uh, I'm gonna, I'll have to see, but probably in about a week's time, I think, he should be in full flower. So uh, I'll probably, most likely, be heading back this direction again in about a week's time. Uh, beautiful, I love it. Okay, as you can see, we're dropping into another valley. I think this is really the last valley before we get start hitting the mountain pass or the mountain passes I should say so uh, but yes uh, you can already see there's a, a bit of a break in the mountain up ahead and the road actually goes through that you can just see the road in the distance this we have some serious descent to do here so uh, time for the descent control on this vehicle to work so that you don't work the the, um, the brakes too much um, I've seen guys uh, especially on heavy heavy vehicles very easy to overheat the brakes on these long downhills you've got to play a bit with the gears as well and uh, yes up ahead here we've got a what is called a cattle gate you can hear my brakes are full of dust um, these are not really cattle gates they're more gates to keep the game inside there's obviously lots of game around here and uh, the farmers are trying to uh, keep the the game on the property and not let it just roam too wildly because uh, when hunting season comes you don't want your neighbor to shoot your your uh, kudu that you've been feeding the whole year in the drought so uh, yes but there's lots of game around here yeah, I've seen a few more kudu next to the road but unfortunately a few of them are really very skinny so it's been a bad year uh, I think we are in year six of a drought in this area now normally droughts last about seven years so hopefully the end is in sight I really hope so for both the animals and the farmer's sake but as you can see up front uh, blue sky and some beautiful clouds high altitude clouds so I'm starting to get excited about sunset interesting how the color of the ground has changed it was that gray whitish color early on and now as we get here close to the mountain it's this reddish Color that actually reminds me more of the Kalahari but we are about what thousand probably about a thousand two hundred kilometers away from the Kalahari but yes there's still patches where the colors change but obviously this uh, red earth is, is really fertile uh, the only problem here of course is water uh, it's no use having fertile earth if uh, there's no water but yes uh, going through another little valley here some big trees up ahead actually a very nice drive even though it's a, a slow drive not to be taken in a rush but I'm quite happy with that uh, as I said earlier on it's about quarter past two now in the afternoon and by my calculations I have about 12 kilometers to go so no problem even though the last bit I'm sure I'll probably be end up doing 20, 10 to 20 kilometers an hour no more uh, from what I've seen on maps and uh, heard from other people but yes uh, onwards and forwards up the hill we go my goodness I just stopped briefly and I got out to take one or two photos and it's windy it is pumping so uh, unfortunately it doesn't look like there'll be any drone flying this afternoon anyway maybe tomorrow morning or maybe it'll stop towards evening but um, the prediction was uh, not for very strong winds this afternoon but yes in the mountains not you never know and over here the roads now really getting rough uh, lots of rocks you don't want to go off the little two-track road that that we're trying to stay on um, so yes this is this is where the fun really starts uh, going into the mountain and I know some places people recommend that you actually have to go into low range uh, because it's so steep as you can see in front here this is, I don't know if you'll see it on the camera, but this is seriously steep. This is at least a 30 degree incline or going downhill. And on the other side, it's uh, very similar. So I'm not in low range yet. I think I'll be fine for now. Uh, thank goodness for a 5 liter V8 because this is uh, some quite heavy climbing we've got to do on this side. But yes, uh, this vehicle has taken me some places and uh, yeah, it's taking me another interesting place today and I see there's some kind of animal around there there's a dung all over the road but it doesn't look like a kudu dung it must be something else but I've seen lots of baboons around maybe it's the baboons that have uh, 
use the, the highway through here as a toilet. Just look how beautiful that is. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the different colors on the road, it's quite intriguing and uh, lots of trees around here. Yeah? And then the mountain on the one side. So we're really going to a bit of paradise. Uh, and look how green it is around here. There's a little dry stream, but obviously it had some water not so long ago. I've got to be very careful over here on the road. There are lots of rocks that can damage the, the bottom of the car. Um, but yes, another, I don't think it's more than 10 kilometers max to go. So I'll just take my time, enjoy, and chat to you. Another rather serious descent this side. Lots of loose stones, so it's quite slippery. Um, yeah, you definitely won't drive with a normal road car. Um, it's just getting a bit too rough now. Though I know people will say they have done it. I wouldn't like to attempt it. Um, it would be extremely rough on your tires as well. Because there's some lots of sharp rocks and stones around here. But yes, uh, fun and games. Uh, um, far more interesting than the normal flat roads that we drive around the Karoo. Because in general the Karoo is very flat. But there are lots of mountain ranges. But you normally cross them uh, perpendicularly, perpendicular to the range. So it's relatively quick and you're through the range. But we're now driving on the side of the mountain. To my right hand side we've got a mountain up probably about a, I don't know, about eight, 800 meters, 900 meters high. And uh, you can see the aloes on the side of the road here. It's beautiful. And this little cutout. Unfortunately, we've got the wind from behind, which is normally not an issue. But if you now drive too slowly, you end up uh, with your own dust catching up with you. And that's quite unpleasant. Uh, it feels like you're driving in a dust storm. And now on the other side, here we go up again. Some serious climbing to be done. Uh, at least the road is uh, not that slippery, I hope. Um, we're still climbing fine. If it gets much worse, I will probably go to low range. Uh, just uh, easier on the car. Doesn't have to struggle at uh, low RPM in first gear. But yes, uh, very different. Not exactly a highway and I'm going to slowly again. Here comes the dust. <laughs> go a bit faster. Every couple of meters we've got these humps that you go over. And a few more meters and another hump. But yeah, we're almost at the crest again, so I can only assume on the other side we're going to be doing a, a rather serious descent again. Let's see what's waiting on this side. And as we turn the corner, yes, we're going down again, of course. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. And I can see the road for the next two or three kilometers next on the side of there. The mountain there. Uh, what a beautiful drive! And again, the veget 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 the vegetation has changed. There's some rather big trees around here, and lots of rocks. You can see these rocks that obviously all rolled down from the mountain at some point. Uh, hopefully, long ago. <laughs> I would hate to have uh, to meet one of those rocks on the road. Or alternatively, if it falls down, we should have a, a rock slide. And I can't believe it, there's even a palm tree here up front. You'll see it on the left-hand side of the road. Very strange. Don't normally associate the Karoo with palm trees. Uh, maybe it was planted there, I'm not sure. I suppose that's possible, but there's no farm or farmhouse or anything around here. So it doesn't make that much sense that somebody would have planted it here. Definitely descending into the valley now. You might be able to see up ahead. Um, we are now almost between two mountain ranges. Sorry, a rather rough piece in the road. Sorry for all the background noise. I've got a, a cool box behind me here and it's making lots of noise. It's squeaky, squeaky, squeaky. And I had a look earlier on, but it would be a major project to move it. So um, sorry for those squeaky sounds. Oh, and look, a beautiful little piece of road. No rocks, no stones. But this won't last. It's too good to be true. I'm sure around the next corner, Mr. Road Builder left a few rough pieces for us again. Um, I know over here somewhere, 
Oh yes, it's just up ahead. There's an old building. Um, I would assume abandoned building. And there's a pump station as well because there's actually uh, where I'm going for tonight. There's a, a, a pump station there where they actually pump water out of the the underwater, uh, the underground river, in the Dry River, and they pump it all the way to a little town called State Level, which is probably about 65 kilometers from here. That's the source of water. So uh, every now and then we see these pump houses you see up here. There's one of them. And uh, they supposedly run 24-7. I'm not sure if that's true. Because I know they've got lots of maintenance issues as well. Oh, and now another rough piece of road again. Here we go. Funny, I just passed a road sign that says road in poor condition. <laughs> If it's now getting into poor condition, I don't know what that bit down back there was, but yeah, well, it's obviously getting worse. Just be careful. Um, if you look here on the left-hand side, uh, you don't want to go down there. Um, I would say the bottom of the valley is a good four or five hundred meters down, and there's absolutely nothing that'll stop you. So you don't want to slide on these loose stones. Um, I would be very nervous riding here with a bike because uh, I would stay on, away from that side of the road. Even we have a keep left policy in this country, we drive on the left hand side of the road. Um, I would, in this case, stay on the other side regardless, there's no traffic anyway. Because if you slip, if your wheels should just slide a bit, uh, it won't be pretty. Anyway, another tree in the middle of nowhere, on the side of the mountain, some beautiful peaks up ahead. And uh, we're going downhill again, I think. In general we are descending more than ascending so we are getting closer to the to the valley bottom but we're going to descend right into the valley at the bottom where the river is and I really do hope there's a bit of water in the river that would be so nice but no guarantees um, no guarantees at all and I see we have probably about seven kilometers to go so uh, we almost get we're almost there we're getting there I wonder how many vehicles travel this road. I know the, the guys who look after the water pumps uh, for the water supply system scheme that, that uh, is down here in the valley. I suppose they must come here every now and then. Uh, but I do know they have remote control and telemetry. So they can switch the pumps on and off and see water levels. And they can also read the, the volume of uh, uh, how many liters per minute, etc, etc. I'm just going to stop here for a second. I want to take a few still photos. Well, I'm back from my little pit stop, took a few photos and uh, there was a plant that was particularly dry that I had to water a bit. <laughs> so I can now concentrate on the road again. Uh, yeah, we are now going on a serious descent here. Yeah? So uh, I wonder if it's not worthwhile. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go into low range here yeah? at this point. It'll help with the descent. So I just put the car into neutral, hit the descent, oh, the, the descent, the low range button. And here we go, we are now in low range. So we can crawl down this mountain conveniently using a, more, uh, a lot more engine braking and not sitting on the brakes all the time, which is not healthy. Um, since we are going downhill at, at quite a rate here. But yes, I would love to fly the drone here. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, but with a howling wind outside, it's not going to happen. Maybe, maybe tomorrow morning. Uh, at some point tomorrow morning, I'll come past here again. Uh, and then maybe with a bit of luck, there'll be less wind. And I can uh, put up the, the Mavic 2 to see if I can get some shots. I would love to get some shots of the car on this road clinging to the side of the mountain. 
but uh, time will tell. It's not the end of the world if I don't get the shot. Um, I have flown over here with a fixed wing aircraft uh, and also with a fixed wing drone. Um, did a bit of a, a recce trip, but uh, that was a while ago. And of course, uh, I didn't follow the road. I just randomly flew over the mountains here. And that's what actually gave me the idea to come here. But yes, this uh, low range is actually working pretty nicely. Uh, a lot less braking needed. So I'm not too worried about uh, the heat of the brakes, uh, which could always be an issue. But we are going down. Unfortunately, I don't have a this vehicle for some reason doesn't have an altim altimeter so uh, I know my previous uh, the Pajero, the Mitsubishi Pajero that I drove before had one and this one doesn't have um, this one's brother or sister I should say I've got two similar vehicles the newer one does have that as well but uh, I use this older vehicle for my rough trips like this where I really go off the the decent roads and the the newer one I use for mostly prepared roads uh, dirt, good dirt roads and tarmac and I can see where we're still going to be descending and we are still going down quite a bit uh, amazing and now there's a road sign here you'll probably see it on the left hand side it says Groot Rivier Poort now the place I'm heading to is actually Groot Rivier Poort so I suppose this is where it starts taking a photo of that as well for historic purposes so let's descend a bit more down into this valley let's see what we have up ahead I can see on the other side of the mountain there's a road winding up but I'm not sure if that's where, uh, where we're gonna go um, that might be the other side of the valley I know there's a road that goes out on the other side it crosses the range on the other side and from there it drops down into the down to the ocean because we probably as the crow flies at the moment I don't know guessing 15 15 18 kilometers away from the Indian Ocean but there's still this there's still one mountain range between us and the ocean but uh, that's why it gets so windy here as well it gets quite quite rough I see up front here we're gonna go left round the corner and there's another pump station there so they pump this water what did I hear about between 11 and 15 liters a second they pump over the mountain uh, and then on the other side of the mountain they pump it another 60 odd kilometers to the little town of uh, Stateville so we are descending 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 I checked just now if there was any um, cell phone coverage but of course there's absolutely nothing so we just have to uh, accept that we are now in the middle of nowhere and uh, maybe if you could go up high enough uh, I had the thought once that uh, you know you send a message either WhatsApp or SMS message on your phone and then you tape the phone to the drone and you go up a couple hundred meters where there's hopefully some signal and then when it gets signal it'll theoretically uh, send the message but I'm not so sure that that is feasible though I'm quite sure the Mavic 2 will carry my cell phone but uh, no real need for that uh, people know I'm going to be out of reach for a while and uh, hopefully nobody will panic and there'll be no disasters for me when I get home um, yes this is now really getting rough uh, I would hate to meet some traffic from the front here yeah? uh, somebody's gonna have to get out of the way <laughs> and at some places this road is really narrow but there are some places you can pull off uh, slightly and uh, yes as you can see we are hitting some really uh, technical road here now lots of rocks very uneven rocks here I think on the other side here we are going to descend madly again as well. This road just winds down. So I'm glad I've switched over to low range. Uh, and technically uh, the diff locks will be on as well, but only when needed. Because uh, with four wheel independent drive and traction control, uh, diff lock doesn't actually, a traditional diff lock doesn't make sense because you don't 
want to lock the diffs when you've got full control over the drive that goes to each wheel plus you can also brake them individually and yeah this is now really bad <laughs> on the left hand side here vertical drop a couple of hundred meters uh, on the right hand side as you can see there's a rocky face there's no way you can overtake somebody here if somebody comes from the front and this road is so tough that you probably can't do more than uh, what I'm doing now five to ten kilometers an hour just descending tomorrow we'll climb this and uh, you don't want to be stuck down there with a, a vehicle of insufficient horsepower I think <laughs> you won't get up here with a normal vehicle and uh, I'm quite thankful that I've got something that is at least kind of suitable for this another friend of mine's got a, a original Land Rover he comes here every now and then with a Land Rover and uh, yes he was the whoops camera almost went flying he was the one who warned me that uh, you know uh, be cautious because it's very easy to damage a vehicle here and then yes it's terrible to damage your vehicle but you could be stuck here which is even worse so uh, let me just concentrate on this really rough little bit here Okay, past that little bit, there's another rough section coming up. Uh, as much fun as this is, I'm glad I don't have to travel this road every day <laughs> to work. But I don't think anybody does. I know there's a farm down in the valley. Uh, but I'm not sure if the farmer uses this road. I hope not. There might be an easier access road on the other side of the mountain. I'm driving with one hand and I'm hanging on to the... Oh, there's a tractor up front. I wonder what they are up to. Madag! Bye donkey! Donkey, donkey! They actually saw me coming and they stopped. Oh, and there in front you can actually see the, the river and there is a bit of water. They actually saw me coming, I think, and they pulled over at a place where they could pull over. Now there's quite a reasonable amount of, of water in the river. That's quite nice. But yes, this is a, a rather rough drive and you don't want to you don't want to lose concentration because uh, one mistake here and you will be f flying down the mountainside and the landing wouldn't be soft um, the drop on my right hand side now is vertical I would say about 200 meters something like that which is more than enough to spoil your day but yes this is the worst part of the road I think As you can see at the bottom there it levels out and it'll be a lot smoother, I think, once we get to the bottom. I wonder if those guys were farm workers. It looks like it. Oh my goodness. We are rocking and rolling here, but we're getting there, don't go too fast. Pretty sure this car hasn't been in quite a rough place like this, <laughs> ever maybe. Can't remember taking it into a rougher place than this. But yeah, we are, the end is in sight. Still have one very steep hill to descend. I can see the tracks where the tractor went up the hill. I'm also hanging on to the tripod with one hand because the camera, I don't have a decent vehicle mount for the camera here. At the last moment, I just thought, let me just stick it on the tripod and make it stand here on the passenger seat. 
and uh, yes it stands pretty firmly but um, this is extraordinary circumstances this road at the moment okay, let's see you got to pick your way here carefully because there's one path that's normally slightly better than the others and also on the other side there's one path that's always worse than the others so you try and see where you're going and hit the good one skip the bad one and then of course you get these sharp rocks as well and you don't want to would prefer not to damage my almost brand new tires okay it seems like we are now at the bottom of this descent here we're going through a little riverbed uh, lots of rocks of course no water here at the moment and then we are climbing again it's a little bit of climb we've got to do up the other side I hope I'm going the right way but maybe I should have turned there I'm not sure it almost looks like I should have turned over there but let's just see uh, exploring really can't remember any mention of a or anything about a gate but uh, I'm gonna open the gate if I can doesn't look like it is locked no, thank goodness it's not locked so I'm just gonna quickly go the handbrake on I wonder which way the gate opens So we get to the front of the vehicle and I see how skew this skew this camera is. <laughs> That's a bit better. Okay. Let's get through the gate. I'm gonna have to close it again of course. And the car's nice and hot. As I walk past it I can actually smell it. Uh, it's worked hard and of course I've had the wind from behind all the way which means very little uh, ventilation or air over the radiator even though the temperature is still way within limits seems like we have some more serious descent to do here yes and here we are finally at the bottom of the of the ravine and now I must try and find a spot where I can hopefully uh, sleep tonight so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just pull off here there's a nice piece of grass I suppose I could really stay here as well but I prefer not to stay next to the road so I'm just gonna stop here and then I'm gonna go for a walk so um, I'll see you guys a bit later well good afternoon and thanks for joining me um, I've reached my destination I'm now in the Groot River Port the big river gorge or port whatever that is uh, the plan is to try and shoot uh, sunset here tonight and maybe sunrise tomorrow morning and in between some other scenic shots anything from some macro stuff to whatever presents itself also some birds around here I know there are fish eagles around here so I did bring a 600 millimeter lens so just in case still a bit windy as you can probably hear but uh, yes made it was a interesting drive over the mountain down the other side but thanks for joining me I appreciate it and let's see what we can capture